Hey, what's up? This is Chris and welcome back. This is the final video in this series explaining how to build out this custom landing page. We've built it all in Figma and now we're finishing just the final design here at the bottom of the page. Everything below this review slider that we did last time. So this section right here and everything down here. Now we already did the footer, so we're good there. Now let me move back. No sooner did I finish the video than I realized, remember that time if you watched that video where I put on this negative margin and I thought, hey, I don't think we need that. And then as soon as I finished the video, I realized, you know what, we do need that. <laughs> and uh, that's why I did it there. So sometimes your past self isn't a total idiot. Uh, sometimes it is. All right, so we've got that set now. That's just one change we need to make. The next section is this bottom section down here. Now, I've tried to kind of keep the design section separate from the coding, mostly because I don't want people who just jump in at the coding to feel like they've missed out entirely. But I will just mention briefly here that if you're working off the Figma, there are ways that you can actually extract CSS directly from here. So like I could come in here and grab this right here. And if I jump over to inspect, it does actually get me a bunch of CSS right here. Now, the trouble is that it's usually not exactly great CSS. You can see here they're actually hard coding values for you. I mean, technically this would work for this exact landing page, but it's not responsive or anything like that. So that's why I've kind of ignored that but occasionally it can be really helpful. So for instance, if you came in on this button and you wanted to get this gradient, well, there you can just copy it directly. You can change it from HSL even to like hex or whatever you want. And then down below, you actually have the, the actual CSS right here. You can just copy and paste. But let's go ahead and jump in and finish up that bottom section. Now that's where all of our pricing is. And let me come over here to our index page and we're just gonna make another component. We'll call this pricing. And I'll come up top here and do the same. Now let me expand the sidebar. Let's also then come over here and just copy and paste this. And I'll change this to uh, be called pricing. Now, so far with all the data, we've just had JSON in here, but you don't need JSON. You can actually just use JavaScript if you want to. So let's call this pricing.js. And then let me just paste this in. And you can grab this from the repo, or if you want to type out your own thing, you are welcome to do that. You can see what I've got here is just a JavaScript array. I could have made this an object as well. It would just change how we got the data out, but it's got each of these items have a price, a plan, this is the little pill, any description, and then details, this is an array. And then I've got a button here, and I'm gonna pass this actually to a button component and my subtext or whatever you wanna call that down at the bottom of the card. Same thing all the way through. This one actually has an extra property of featured on it. And then I've got my final one down here. So we're just gonna pull this in just like we would a JSON. This is gonna be pricing.js. And now let's go ahead and get rid of all of this right here. And I don't need that JavaScript either. Now this will be a section here with a class of pricing wrapper. And then I'll have a grid small. This is where that header area will be. And I'll have a H2 with a class of H2. And this will say a price for everyone. And then just below, I will have text with muted here as a class. And it will say three tiers to meet your needs. Now, just to make sure this is all working, Let's shut down this and go back to our index page and save. And there it is, it shows up right there like we'd expect. Now we've got those three cards we did down this way right here. And so this is what we're going to now loop through that data for and create or generate all these cards. So let's come up here and let's start generating some data. We're gonna call this pricing container and we'll give it a class of container small, which is one of those utility classes. It will have a blur on it as well. And then the nice thing is we can just quickly loop through all of our data and produce these cards. Now, since it's just an array, I can use a map method directly on it. Of course, if this was an object, you have to do like object.entries or keys, depending on how you want to structure it. Uh, but for each of the cards, for each of the objects in that array, I want to have a div with a class of pricing card. And then just for the featured card, I need to do a little uh, if statement in here, a ternary. So I'll say card, if it has the property of featured, then give me the class of uh, featured. We did something very similar uh, with the indicator, I believe. And then this should have a class of grid small as well. Now there's a couple sections inside of these cards. The first is where the title for that card and the price for the card lives. So this will be a paragraph, first of all, with pricing card price. And inside here, I'm going to grab my price from that card object that's being passed in. Now we already have an H2 for the section, but I need an H3 for each of these cards to delineate kind of the structure of the site. So I'm gonna say pricing card pill, and I'll give it a class of H3 as well. And in here, I'll have my card plan. So if I save it, it should not yell at me. So let's see what's going on. It can't find something it looks like. And this is the problem here. I'm not sure what a semicolon is doing there. Get out of there. 
and then this needs to be surrounded because it's an actual class. All right, we made a royal mess of that, but there it is, all right? So we've got the price and then the plan name, price, plan name, price, and plan name. So below this title section, let's loop through the data and finish out the rest of the card. I'm gonna have a paragraph just below here with a class of pricing uh, card description and a class of text muted. And this will just have my card dot description. And now below here is gonna be a UL with a list of all the features. So this UL will have a class of pricing card feature container. And now if you remember from the way our data was structured, this is actually an array with those different values. So here I've got another little map I'm gonna do. This will be over the card details dot map. So I'm mapping over the detail array, details array in that card. And here I'll have a feature is what we'll call it. And then in parentheses, let's go ahead and return an LI here with a class of pricing card feature. And the middle section of this card will depend on basically whether or not this is the featured card. If I move to my final design here, you'll see that the featured ones have a pink color. Everything else has this gray uh, color, this muted color. So let's come over here. We're basically going to give it two different options. So we're going to jump back out to the card itself and say, if that has a featured attribute on it, and this is just a ternary once again, we've done these before. This will have an icon name. And then let's run over here and grab a check mark. So let's search for check. And this is the one we want right here. So check circle. Let me grab that and we'll paste that in there. I need to give it a couple other things here. So we're going to say width of uh, 24. Then I'll give it a class of text accent two. Let's close out that icon component. And then we're going to copy this down because there is another option. And let's remove that there. So let's space this out so you can see. And for this other side of the ternary, I need to just do a colon. And the only difference here will be a text alt. Now let's save that. And there's actually going to be an easier way to do that now that I'm looking at it. Um, so let's just do it all right here. So let's grab this ternary here, get rid of that, get rid of this. Look at us saving lines of code. And I'll remove all this. And let's just do a ternary right here. So if it is a card of featured, then we'll have a class of text accent two. Otherwise, we'll have a class of text alt. And I think that should work the same way. So we save that. Hey, look at that. We saved a whole line of code. Now, in addition to the icon, we're going to have some text. That text will just be in a span. Because we're looping through the individual features, we're just going to have feature. And finally, below that list, we are going to have a button and then some text just below that. Now, we need to actually pull in our button component because that's what I want to use. So let's jump up here. I'm going to say import button from and since we're in the same directory, just a dot and a forward slash should work for us. So we're pulling in the button. Oops, I saved it. Now it's yelling at us. We've got to pass this button if several things. This is how we set it up. First of all, it needs text. So let's pass it the card.button.text. And you might remember on that pricing here, the button, here's what we're passing it. Text, URL, and style. And this is what we just mapped over. All right, let's come back over here. I'm also going to have a link here of card.button.url. Uh, and then our style is going to be card.button.style. And let's close out this tag and save it. All right. Let's come down here. There we go. So we've got our muted style and then our uh, vibrant kind of style. I forget what we call it. Secondary, I think, maybe. Finally, we've got a small tag here with a class of text muted. And this will have our card.subtext. And just like that, we've looped over all of our data. And now all we have to do is style it. All right. Up this way and below the reviews right here. We'll call this our pricing section. First of all, we're going to have a pricing wrapper with the display of grid. And then our gap will be our var size fluid five. Next, we've actually got the container itself. So the pricing container. This will have a display of flex so that those cards will be next to each other. But I do want them to be able to wrap. So let's add a flex wrap of wrap and then a gap of var size three. And to keep everything vertically aligned, let's do align items center and justify content center to keep it horizontally aligned. Now they're wrapping because they're supposed to. Remember we're doing mobile first, we're gonna do some media queries down below. Now we've got a blur behind that and I wanna actually adjust the blur for this section as well. So we'll do pricing container before and then, and then oh, jump me around there, sorry. And then we'll do also do an after, let's see, right here like this. This will be inset in every direction here, we're gonna do 25%. You can see that just makes it a little smaller. 
And I really want this to just be the most subtle little hint poking out behind these cards. Now, right now you can see through the cards, so we're gonna have to change that here. Let's go ahead and add then our pricing uh, card. So here we'll have the part padding var size three, and then var size five. And border here will be one pixel solid. And then I'm gonna have my text alt as the default, and we'll change the featured one a little bit. Our background color then, same thing. We're gonna have our background color for all of them. And now you can see just that real subtle thing just behind the center one, which is what I want. So as promised, we're gonna change up the featured card. So for that one that has featured, padding will stay the same, but I do actually wanna change the border. Let's just change the border color, and this will be accent too. Now you might remember our pricing featured card also has this little pill up here. We're just gonna add that with a before pseudo element. So in order to position that absolutely, I need this to be position of relative. And since we're thinking about that pill, let's just go ahead and do it. So let's come down here. I'm gonna add this as a before pseudo element, like I mentioned, and then we do need a content here, and this will be most uh, popular. Now you could also programmatically add this if you wanted to, but I just decided to do it in the CSS. Now let's set the top here, and I wanna calculate this. Let's do something like our var size one times negative one. That may or may not be enough. We won't know yet until we get a little bit further, so let's grab just the background, which is what we need to apply our gradient. And let's set our font size to our var font size of double zero, which is really tiny. Text tra transform here will be uppercase, and then text align will be center, which it should be either way. And then our border radius will be our var size two. Let's give that thing a little bit of padding. So we'll say var size one or size two there, and that spaces it out nicely. Now, if we come over here, you're gonna notice that it needs to actually go up just slightly because uh, its center is basically just below here. So we can control this in a few different ways. But if we move it its own height up, let's try that first. So we'll say transform, translate Y negative 50%. And that's a little high. So let's adjust this right here to point maybe two five. Basically as this scales, I want it to be able to adjust to that. So I think that should work. Let's go ahead and open this up and see what it looks like on a small screen. So I think this actually will need to be a fluid as well. We're kind of in the magic number territory where we're just kind of guessing on numbers, but something like that looks about right. Now, when these things are stacked, I just want them to be just like that. But when it gets out to desktop, I actually want this one to be um, bigger than the rest. So let me come in here and zoom this out just so we can see that. And I think before we adjust that, we're gonna have to figure out some more styling on these so that they'll actually stack next to each other. So let's kind of put a placeholder here for a media query. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just style the card so that we kind of have a finalized version first. So let's grab the uh, card price and we'll, we will set the font size here to our var of size fluid two. And I want the font weight to be bold and then text align here to be center. Now, so that we can see what's going on, let's zoom back in. So forget that and we'll zoom back out in a second. And then let's grab the pricing card uh, pill. So that's the little pill just below that says starter plan or pro plan or whatever that is. And I want the background color here to be our HSL of var text alt and our color here to be HSL of background. So that's the text itself needs to be that color. Let's text transform this to uppercase and then text align it to center. Now this font size actually wanna be very small. So we're gonna do font size of double zero as well, just like the other little pill we did earlier. And now that I'm thinking about this, we're repeating ourselves a lot. So let's grab, I think it's all this right here. Is that the little featured pill? Yeah. Let's paste this in down here. There we go. So that should look just about the same. Now you might remember in our markup over here that that pill itself, let's see, where is that? That's right here. And actually let's take off this H3, we don't need that. But it is an H3 tag. And this is what I meant about having semantic tags that are appropriate because this is really the starter plan, plan the pro plan and whatever I call this, the writer's plan. Uh, and uh, so adding these semantic tags allows us semantically to lay out the page properly and then we can style things however we want. So come back over this way. Let's go ahead and finish out this section. So pricing card description. Here will be our font size and we're gonna do a var font size of zero. And already it's starting to stack up a little bit nicer for us. Let's grab our pricing card feature container. This is the UL. I'm gonna set the list style here to none. And then actually I just want the same font size. So let's copy this down. This will be a display of grid with a gap of var uh, size two. And then I'm gonna add some margin on the bottom of var size two. 
Uh, again, I want those icons to stack next to each other. So what do I need? I need a flex container. So pricing card feature, display a flex, and then gap here of var, var size two. And if I save that, that should be a completed card. Now we can come back out here and they stack up nicely next to each other. So where was our little note up here about our media query? Here it is. So we're just worried about this center card. When we're on desktop view and we can see all three next to each other, we want that to actually be a little bit uh, enhanced or scaled up. So let me just paste in what I did here. What I'm saying is above 1,075 pixels, I want to change something on this featured card, which is just to transform it up to increase the border, to increase the padding, and to increase the margin. There it goes. It pops up, and you can see it expands itself quite a bit. Now, I feel like I'm kind of losing all the definition of that blur. So let me come back up to that blur section that we customized. Let's do something maybe not quite as drastic. There we go. Now I can see it a little bit better. And once we move over to a mobile view here, now they should just stack up right uh, over top of each other. And they do, which is great. Now, let's see. I want this text to be centered as well. And I've got a lot of text centers in here. I probably should have just made them all text center. Um, but while we're at it, let me just add one more to the stack. And let's see, I think it was this right here. So text align of center. There we go, it pulls it in the middle. All right, so we've just got two sections left, this happy clients and let us tell your story. So let's get happy and run back over here. Let's see, pricing index. All right, right here, let's call this clients. This one should be pretty quick. I'll copy this down, same kind of thing. Now this time let's do something similar to how we did our nav container. Let's just say const data here and let's pass it right up top here, just a list of icons that we're gonna need. So there we go, just a simple JavaScript array. And we won't need a button, but we are gonna need an icon here. And let's go ahead and delete all of this. I'll show you those icons here in a second, but let me just add a class here of clients to this section and then a grid of small, not MS, small like that. Now this has an H2, but let's give it a class of H3 just to make it a little bit smaller. And then I'll add another class of clients uh, heading and this will say happy clients. Now let's save our index page so we can see it come over and look at this simple JavaScript object. <laughs> I don't, I have a equal signs between all these. Sorry about that. There we go. All right, there we go. Happy clients is coming in. Now I grabbed all of these icons again from this icons here and we used the same exact thing we used in Figma, which was simple icons. And this just gives you a bunch of different logos for people. And I just randomly grabbed some logos. I don't even remember if it was the same ones we used in the Figma file. And then I've just set an alt tag on them as well. So in this section here, let's call this uh, client logo container. And then let's map through all these. So again, I'm gonna tell Astro that I'm doing some templating here. And we just called that array data. So data.map. And then we'll just call it I and in parentheses, let's return here our icon component that we got from Astro Icon with the name that will be equal to i.icon. So the thing we're looping through, it's icon property. And then we will set a width here of 120 pixels and a height of 85 pixels. And then we'll give it a class of client logo and text muted for all these. And then finally, we'll pass an alt here and this will be our i.alt. Let's close off this with a self-closing tag. If I save it, there they go, they all pop in for us. Such is the beauty of Astro Icon. Now all we have to do is style that. So where is our CSS? Here it is. Let's call this clients. And then I want my client, my client heading. That was that H2. I want the font weight here to be normal. And then let's go ahead and grab the container for all those icons. That was called a client logo container. That needs to be a display of flex with flex wrap of wrap and a justify content center with a gap of zero up and down so that when they stack, there won't be any spacing between them. But side to side, I do want some spacing. So we'll do size fluid of three. And the reason I'm doing it like that is those icons already have a box around them. So they kind of provide their own gap. So we don't need to add that in separately. The next, I'm gonna say client logo here needs to be flex of zero for grow, one for shrink. And I want them to ideally try to be size fluid of five. That allows them to stack a little bit tighter and that's what I'd like so that, you know, by the time you reach a tablet size, they're stacked next to each other. All right, we're getting dangerously close to being done. Let's kill this pricing, come over here and we're gonna add one more and that's just gonna be called CTA. Now this one's gonna be really easy because it's very much like our header. So let's open the sidebar and this time I'm gonna copy, let's see, where is my header? 
is called hero. So let's copy this and we're going to call this CTA. And I do want this button to be pulled in because we're going to use that. I'm going to change this here to say section because it's not a header. And then I want a class of CTA on here. This is going to be an H2 here with a class of H2. And this will say, let us tell your story. We don't need quite this much text, so let's get rid of that. And everything else will be the exact same. Let's come over here and save it. And there it is. Now we've got a couple of things we need to do to that in our CSS. So let's grab our CTA section here, CTA. First of all, we're going to say everything in this section needs to have text align center. And then just in the CTA section, when we have a narrow class, we're going to use one more open prop, which is max width var size content three. You can see that 60 characters versus our 80 I think we had on the header. And just like that, we finished up the site. Now, there may be some more things you want to add. And if so, that's why we've got the community improvements branch. But I think that looks pretty good overall. And it should look good, good on both mobile and now on desktop. That looks just about right. Now, one note that on Firefox, these will be a little bit more pronounced. Um, that's just the way that they process these. But on Safari and on Chrome and Edge, a lot of those, they look very similar to what you got right here. I said we were done, but why don't we just get this up on the web? All right, there's no use in doing all this and then not even getting a chance to do that. So let's uh, kill the server here. I'm going to come over here and commit all this. Let's say something like website is done. All right, and submit all that. Now I do need to go ahead and publish a branch here. Let's open up GitHub. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab a new one here. Let's set it to private for now. It'll be public by the time you see this. And this will just be called design landing page. Let me create that repository. And then since I've already got a local repository, I'm just going to copy this right in here. And let's paste that in. And there we go. It should have sent it up. Let's come over here and refresh. Hey, there it is. We're ready to go. Now we're going to use something called Netlify. So if I go to app.netlify.com, I can quickly get a site up and going. Now I've already got an account with him. It's free, but I'm just going to click add a new site and import an existing project. I'm going to import it from GitHub. And it should make you authenticate. I've already authenticated, so it's just checking that. And let's come in here, and what do we call that? Design. There it is. Let's grab it right here. And notice that it's smart enough to look and figure out what our build command is. We hit deploy site, and that's it. It deploys. Now, it might take just a couple seconds for it to finish up. And if you want to look at it, you can click here, and it'll actually walk you through the whole thing. It's already done here for me. And I can watch it right here. So this is going to be live now on the internet. Just like that, a uh, site is ready to go. Now, whenever you push to that branch, it will automatically trigger a deploy. Kind of that's the default setting. You can change it if you want. Let's change this domain, though, because I'm not sure what that means. And let's call this design landing page.netlify.app. I've also got this up on my own website. But there it is, just like that. You've got your own site ready to go. So from designing the whole thing in Figma to coding the entire site with Astro and open props and all the tools that we used, to now getting it up live on Netlify, I hope this whole project series was a huge help for you. Now, if you watch the entire thing, let's just do something small. I like to do this on my channel. If you watch the whole thing, just leave a ninja emoji in the comments. I like to do that. And that will be your little wink to Sean and to me that you finished the entire series. Great job. Of course, if you want to reach out to me, you can find me on my channel, Coding in Public. I try to focus on kind of complete builds, whether that's just a component or something like that and leave the comprehensive explanation of certain frameworks and things like that to people like Sean who are really good at it. Finally, you can do your own pull requests on that community improvements branch to make this site even better, and I can't wait to see what you do. Thanks so much again to Sean for having me on his channel. I hope to see you all soon. In the meantime, happy coding.